Welcome to the Unashamed Podcast with Phil Robertson, Al Robertson, of course, here. Old Jace is along for the ride. Uh, great episode today, uh, kind of continuing our discussion of Abraham. Uh, Jace and Dad are having a, <laughs> interesting connection issues on the episode today, so you'll see that. It's pretty funny. I get tickled uh, easily uh, just when they are, when those two are missing the mark, so it's pretty funny. Uh, we got a little uh, advice on what to do with uh, stalkers. Um, especially if you're a man, it's a female stalker. Uh, so really interesting stuff from Jason dad about that. So be looking for that. Uh, and then of course, just some good Bible, uh, Abraham and sort of, Hey, factors in our faith today. So glad you're along for the ride. Buckle up. Here we go. I am unashamed. What about you? So Jace, you just, uh, had a little trip to yeah. the great state of South Carolina. This has turned us. into an annual event for my family, as in my wife, three kids, which one of them's married now, his wife, and now we have our Nicaraguan young girl that, you know, she's, she's I guess sort of we, like the adopt. She's sort of like yeah. Rebecca to Willie's family. Yeah, yeah, we've kind of acquired her. She's an orphan girl from Nicaragua. She's worked her way to get a scholarship. In the United States, and uh, she goes to college, but you know she has she has one sister, but no money. And you come to America, you don't know anybody. That's a good thing you know. coming out of the immigration problem. The ones yeah. the, the ones we're looking for are the ones you're suggesting. Here. Exactly oh, this right. girl has worked. Look, it's not because of us. She has worked her entire life. The guy who ran the orphanage down there in the Domin- I mean, in the Nicaragua, Nicaragua. he. Uh, <laughs> He has been our mentor and uh, has really helped her. And, He's uh, one of our One Kingdom guys. Yeah. yeah well, he, the yeah, bottom line yeah, is, so. why you, since you brought it up, words, we're not at all anti-immigration as God's people. Immigrants talked about throughout the Bible. Sure. We yeah. love everybody, huh? That's right. Well, yeah, a shocker of shock. <laughs> Look, <clears throat> but we, do, we are saying <clears throat> that when the open borders and that kind of fiasco <clears> – <throat> You just can't have it. You have well, to have some well. You have to have a common process, sense, orderly you know. process to get them so, in. Well, here. even even Karina, that's that was she had to go through. She had a tough time. Oh man, to, she had a scholarship here to go to school, but she got pushed out of her own country, and she yeah. couldn't get back in. Well, there was a civil war going on, and so you talk about you talk about other countries. She couldn't get back in her own country. Now look, this is what this girl did. She learned English. Just on the internet, YouTube, and and so then she starts applying to other countries to get an education, and so she gets accepted in Germany. She goes to high school there on a scholarship by herself. Go for four years, goes to Germany. Never been there, don't know anybody, don't know German, and so there she works her tail off, learns German, you know, and she's still working on on her English, and then she applies, gets a scholarship from there to the United States and that, now she's here but you know I they called us because they were like we got a girl that's stranded she can't get back into her country and it wasn't you know her she time. had like two months be- yeah. of interim time where she's basically stuck out of her country in a neighboring country trying to get to the United States no she's no in family. America she loves her country America she's here yeah she, but she loves Nicaragua she wants to make a difference there she yeah. you know she works and uh she no handout here she won't she won't even take a handout she works she gets her a job on campus and awesome awesome heart loves the Lord and really that's what she attributes to her success she's mm-hmm. like you know I trust God and he's taking care of me but anyway so every year for the last I guess four or five years we've taken a, a trip it's kind of an adventure type trip we went to Israel last year so uh, we went to Utah one year and climbed the mountains. You know, my kids, they're into this. You know, we're running, hiking, biking, which is... So preferring godly immigrants <laughs> would might not fly too well with red lips and the squad. You know what I'm saying? I have no idea what that means. But anyway, so this year we go to South Carolina. The red uh, lips and the squad. Because I, I wanted to do something along, you know, where I could fish they got, you know, I just want to see the place. There's a hundred golf courses on, you know, on the island at Hilton Head. So we went, Phil, you'd love it. It's like the yuppies took over and they turned a wilderness into like a commune. Like they built a city in the wilderness. 
They don't cut trees there. And uh, I would love it, this. Well, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> everything's like cookie cutter, you know. And look, everybody bikes everywhere, and they kayak, and they jog, and they run. There's little families, you know. And well, I really liked it. It's and, a, uh, it's a, it is a. I mean, there's constant motion there. I know, you know, what I'm saying motion. everybody's always out there walking the dogs. The oh yeah, but I could never it, find this, a store like because there's no signage. Yeah, anywhere. the signs are all nothing is like out there. It'd Everything's like in if, the woods. It'd be like if you had a town in our hunting. Do property. all the roofs have mirrors on them yet? <laughs> I have, I don't know what that. Means. I'm not following you. <laughs> you know. Why would a roof have a mirror? Well, it's because not. these people don't want to <clears throat> any kind of. Power. They want to come in from the sun only. I figured this bus. Oh, well, this would fit right in. You know what? I never saw it there. Well, you I, couldn't because there's too many trees. Well, I never saw a power line though. I guess it's all underground. It is. They're, but anyway, they're I, big on there, I liked but. it. But it's like you know how our culture reverts back. It's now like riding a bike is the coolest thing ever. It's like making a comeback. Everybody was wearing was was on bikes. Going back to your roots, so, so you'll know. <clears throat> With the Robertson clan, uh, raised, born and raised, this is your parents coming on when they were children. You say, was there ever one bicycle or tricycle? Did one ever come out of the Robertson clan, the entire seven children? Was there ever a bicycle or tricycle on the premises at any given time? Zero. What, you don't like bikes? Nobody had the money to buy oh, a bike. Okay. <laughs> you walked. Okay. Well, walk. We all had a rubber tire a yeah. piece. And when you were <laughs> the closest we ever got to a bicycle or a tricycle, you would take a, an old rubber tire, yeah. no rim or anything, just a tire, and you would roll it. And you would, five or six of you would take off rolling the tires. So you yeah. would pretend like, boy, it'd be nice to actually be if riding. We were riding the tire, we gauged who was the, had the fastest tire. Well, whoever the fastest child was had would win the contest on yeah. which, which one of these tires is really get it. Well, the, the fastest one would always win the he's contest. he pushing the tire. He, he was he was rolling the tire. Man, well, we come a long way. Oh, man. Well, well I, my first bike didn't have the rubber part. It was just too... <laughs> Yeah, you know, I found it side of the road down here somewhere. I don't think yeah. we ever bought any of you a no bicycle. bikes, but we no, all we never had, had them bike. because people. So we held to that no bicycles or tricycles around. But here. we well, had we them. We because people, you know, it's weird about being at the end of the road and the end of the civilization where you live. Is people come down here and just dump stuff, you know, like uh, and, you know, a lot of dogs, a lot of dogs. Do but remember, I mean, <clears throat> old bikes. Right over and, here, yeah. there was a sign that said no dumping, and people dump there. That's where yeah. they went. They took the no dumping sign as a sign for we need to dump stuff here. Yeah. Remember yeah, that? Willie and I used to just oh, like, every morning it. we would comb that and that's where we got our toys. The redneck just took <laughs> dumping here, but they, they forgot the no. <laughs> the no yeah. is what they did. Yeah. Quite. So I'm in South Carolina. Well, we go fishing and uh they're like I didn't want to go way out. They're like, It's the largest shark nursery in the world. So, I mean, you you basically, if you put anything on a line and just put it out the side of the boat, a shark's fixing to hit it. And we yeah, proved that. That seems like a wonderful place to <laughs> spend three or four days. <laughs> well, it was. Rolling the, I tell you this, there were, there were no people swimming in the water that I saw at any point at any time. And they had little beaches. But there were people on jet skis and all, and I thought, you know, there's a fine line between riding a jet jet ski and becoming, you know, a devil horse. You know that bait yeah. that you use for largemouth. And uh, they never saw Jaws too. You well, know, my buddy the that just popped into my head. My buddy the other day sent me uh, some YouTube video. There's a guy in Gulf Shores where we go. Yeah, he's on some kind of board where he's like, he's like standing up, but he's going on the board and. They had one of these drones filming it, and there was a huge shark just trailing him. 
you know, behind him. <laughs> I thought, oh. <laughs> so anyway, we, music? Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> So, so I, we go out there fishing. So, look, I had, you know, they were, well, they were catching sharks. My kid's going crazy. You know, Missy tied into one of those spinners. I don't know what they call which kind of shark it was, but it was just literally spinning out of the water. She's screaming, you know, and the Nicaraguan girl, Karina, she's just going crazy. She's never even fished before. Yeah first fish was like some big tiger shark or whatever and uh so i'm fishing this little cut because he said you know the fish you can eat he's caught some over there so i got a little spin casting reel 25 pound test line and so i feel a bump you know i set the hook and i'm like what in the world i mean it just was just slow movement just dead weight fight lasted probably 20 minutes but there was no runs and i just keep coming up and I, he's like that can't be a fish because it just and so we thought it was a, a stingray but it just didn't i've caught stingrays yeah. before it just didn't feel like that so up this comes and everybody screamed because it it literally looked like the alien in uh the alien movies it, it, it looked the, like the hatch was going to drop and the and teeth, the were, teeth gonna, were gonna. But it looked like the alien when it came up. And I was like, what in the world <laughs> is that? And so our guide started going nuts. He said, that's a horseshoe crab. And uh, for you that, you know, you can Google a picture of them. I mean, they look like an alien. And he's like, they're like old, right? They're, oh, yeah. yeah they're, well, he went on this. This, uh, this kind of bothered me. You know, he said, oh, that's one of evolution's relics right there. You caught the crossover. You know, they're protected. We got to get him back in, which I want to take a picture. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm like, well, you can't help but ca- we he, he bit my shrimp. I caught him. It's not illegal to catch him. Right. Let's take a picture and throw him back. And on its own, salt water dream this thing up and said, no think, way. Why don't we make yeah. a, what you call a crab, a horseshoe crab, it was a guys. Horseshoe. That's the first thought that went through my mind. When I saw this, I thought, you're telling me this just came from nothing? I mean, this was like one of the most detailed creatures that you could imagine. There were legs going everywhere, and I don't know How, how big? How much the thing It was weighed? 20 pounds. Oh, okay. It was pretty big. And uh, Evolution's relic. Well, that gave us an opportunity to share. That's that's code word for we don't know where this thing comes from. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> exactly. This exactly. is <clears throat> this gave you know me an opportunity to say, well, you know, there might have been a creator behind that. And he was like, do what? I mean, it's like hey, I had no idea what I was talking about. But it did make me think while we were there. I mean, I love the place. I love the community. It's fishing. We're catching these things. But the deer had taken over because there's no hunting on this island. And so there, it's the same kind of deal a lot of times when you see in the millennial crowd and the and the yuppie crowd, they try to live together with nature instead of controlling it as a responsibility. Oh, yep. we love it. You know, we love seeing the deer, <clears throat> but in the back of our mind, we know, look, that's the greatest thing you can eat on this island. It just ran across the car. Right. And uh, so their biggest problem is deer. It's not car wrecks you know we're they're running over deer it's more the deer running over the cars there's so many deer but they're malnourished you could tell they're all small because there's not enough you know to eat around you need to turn loose about 15 20 rednecks in there and they it whittle all that down oh jimmy red could could manage remedy that yeah he could remedy that situation but it was a good trip it was a good good family do you have time. any fans do you have any uh fan oh yeah look so we don't we well i hate i missed it yeah <laughs> <laughs> we we don't eat out for obvious reasons because you recognize right. you know but the last night we did because they said this restaurant i mean they go they take the they get the oysters and the shrimp and they pull up to the harbor yeah and dump them you know and then pressure. you can eat yeah so i'm like well so they did know what was good table fare? Oh, Phil, look, we go to this place, and of course, there's an hour wait. There's a thousand people there because I'm like, there's a thousand people here for a reason. So we get down there, it's right in the bay. And uh, of course, it turned into an event for me. You know, I'm yeah. taking pictures, people recognize me. And uh, but, I'm on record as saying, Jay, since you're telling your South Carolina story, <laughs> I didn't know about the little island with the shark infested waters, but I did, I did 
give a speech one time, and I said, I've been all over the United States, most of the states, few of them I missed. <clears throat> I said, but I'm here to tell you the best people I've ever actually run up on was from South Carolina. And some guy in the back said, you stay around here long, you may change your mind. <laughs> But I, I was just saying, well. No, maybe. I was impressed. No, the South Carolina. People. But, look, I was telling. There are good people. They're my good wife. Carolina, North and South Carolina. Well, the people I was taking pictures with and this kind of deal, these were just tourists from all over. And uh, and my wife got so upset because I had one woman who just, I mean, she was a lot older than me. She was way bigger than me. She was really loud. And she just thought she had in her mind that she's in South Carolina and she's going to go out on a date with Jace from Duck Dynasty. And so I'm I'm looking at you, Jace. I'm trying to see what (laughs) what exactly was it that was drawing her to your presence. I have no idea. I I could say the same thing about you. I mean, tell some of your tell uh, some of your stories. My conclusion is there's a lot of hard up women out there. (laughs) So what'd you do? Just kind of what is wrong with her? Well, first I brought up my wife. I'm here with my wife, you know, but it didn't. It wasn't a deterrent. Well, I didn't know my wife was watching this because she's been way too. Oh, they're watching all the time. Been way too friendly here, you know, and invading my personal space. So here comes my son. He says, uh, excuse me, ma'am, uh, my dad's here with his family, and it's time to go. You know, he, he just – but so I'm like, why did my son do that? You know, well – Missy sent him over. Missy sent him over and said, hey, your dad needs help because that <laughs> – Yeah. He was trying well, to be Well, they sent nice. us word, some of the guys that speak a lot, and they said it would be better that when you're staying in a hotel – and someone rings the doorbell, it would be better if someone else opened the door. Not you, Phil. Not you personally. Don't open the door. I'm like, what are you talking about? (laughs) They said, well, what they do is they have these women that they'll send up and they might not be as big as the one. He said she was a large woman. <laughs> not that there's anything yeah. wrong with it. I was yeah, just, just saying. saying. It was, in, it was intimidating. But you see one at the door, you open the door, hey, what do you need? And, and, and she just embraces you. Somebody else is down the hallway taking a picture. Then they put the picture on the Internet. You know, there's Phil Robertson, you know, one man, one woman, you know, for life. And there's Phil Robertson, lovey-dovey, with some chick <laughs> in, a, in a hotel. Bo, we got him now. And I'm like... Do what? <laughs> what happened? So they basically said, don't open the door. So to this day, when I was warned about that, I had never even thought about that. But I said, I know why. Right. I know why. I just wouldn't think there would be a woman knocking on your door. You well, know, I, I don't I, know. That's what I'm saying. If they chase Jace, you know, why not the old gray beard <laughs> Any, over here? Anything's possible. Yeah. I mean, I did in the, in the first year of Duck Dynasty, I pulled out of my house took a ride at the stop sign, came up to the next stop sign, and a car just come pulling in front of me, like you'd see in a movie. Yeah. So and I thought they were going to so, get out with guns. Well, yeah. there was two girls, two hey. young girls, dressed scantily, <clears throat> and one of them comes around, I have my window down, and she just comes at a dead run toward the truck. And I'm like, what is going on? I, I, did, I mean, I knew there wasn't a weapon, so I wasn't, like, startled. And she just jumped in my window, in my truck, basically in my lap. Well, I looked at the other one because I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, I, it, it, it startled me then. And the other one was videoing it. And so the girl looked at me and said, did saying. you get it? it did you get it? Yeah. And I'm That'll like, get out of my – Facebook next day. Well, I never saw it, but I, I don't <laughs> check it. That was – I mean, that was like seven years ago. But I thought, okay. I, I, it's this, just frolicking and fun with Jace, you know, the – the guy that goes around and preaches here's here's what he's doing and they show that well, it's, yeah. it's out there somewhere i'm <laughs> yeah, sure somebody <laughs> saw it well you i guess it pays to be careful you know the falwells told us that <clears> the <throat> jerry falwell the senior dad mm-hmm. that back in the day because you know he was after the pornography and you remember he was one of the early guys to speak up nationally so they were after him and they do these setups where they try to put women in his hotel room so it got so bad that he would have to send an advance team of people in to make sure there wasn't anything because it happened apparently once, but they, you know, it didn't get a. They were trying to get pictures of him in a compromising situation to ruin his reputation. That's why you well, never a news go flash. anywhere alone. Here's a news flash for America: 
when you when you hit about 73 and you're a godly man if you're truly a godly man you hit about 73 there's a long list of things that are more important than sex yeah so so everybody will understand you know, by 73 okay yeah, we made a run at it, but it's that's <laughs> that's way down the list. What do you say? So you're in that, don't bother him with this. <laughs> you're, you're in that stage now where you're just trying to get through it. You know, what's you know, on your that. mind when you get up? Wow, women! I said the resurrection of the dead <laughs> is on my mind. I'm yeah. 73 years old. I got four years, and that's the average age of a male when he dies in the U.S. I was like, are you after the chick? I said, not hardly. I'm after the resurrection of the dead, dear dude. There is a lesson in that, like, because I travel a lot, and you do too. And, uh, of course, I am always have my little team there with me or whatever. But every once in a while, there'll be a woman come up and be like, what are you doing after the show? I always say yeah. the same thing. I'm going home, or I'm going to the hotel, and I'm calling my wife. Yeah, She's yeah. like, oh, that ends it. It's over. Yeah, and yeah. I don't travel. I mean, Lisa's always with me. What you told us that day when we were young, never leave the house without your woman or your Bible. That's it. And so that's, that's good advice that I've stuck to. For so where are we today on the <laughs> podcast here? We are in uh, we're in Genesis. <clears throat> we're talking about Abraham. Uh, last time Mom was with us, and uh, we sort of looked at the sort of the family relationship. You know, Abraham is a big deal in the Bible. And, um, in fact, today I want us to talk a little bit about you know, he's he's mentioned more in the New Testament, you know, post gospels. Well, I mean, Jesus mentioned him several times too, mm-hmm. but he's mentioned more in the New Testament than any other figure, other than Jesus himself, Father of our faith, Father of our faith. And so, so you know, you think about him. <clears throat> here's a guy. He's basically just kind of living his life. Um, he's obviously a man who believes in God because he listens when God calls him. So in Genesis mm-hmm. 12, we talked about this last time, he basically says, Abraham, I want you to take your family and I want you to go to a place you've never seen and I'm going to bless you <clears throat> and you're going to be a blessing to many people. And you're going to have, now at this point, Abraham is, well, he's Abram. He hadn't changed his name yet, but he's 75 years old and he has no children. Mm-hmm. Sarah, his wife, Sarai at the time, was barren she couldn't have children and you know people were living longer in his day 150 years so i guess i don't know if it's just a middle age but i mean 75 years old yeah the exact word is is i think it's abraham abraham against against all hope that's right yeah so (laughs) having a kid at 75 your wife's about 90 by that time how old was he well, well, he was 75 when we first see him. Yeah, yeah. And then God comes back to him when he's 99. Mm-hmm. So, so 24 years have gone by, and God comes back to him and says, because uh, at this point, and you mentioned this last time, Dad, Abraham, is is he believes in God, and he believes the promise. Mm-hmm. But here he is, he can't, they can't have kids, so he's thinking, well, maybe, maybe I need to do something. Maybe God needs me to, you know, help the plan here along. So Sarah has a has a handmaid, has a you know person that is you know her servant, and so Abraham marries her, which was you know in that day that's what polygamy, and then she gets pregnant by him. So you know, remember Sarah is the problem; she can't have children. But Abraham, even at you know hit this age, will pass my our lineage down through Hagar here. Right. So that was his thought process. <clears throat> the problem was that wasn't God's plan. <laughs> so so Abraham realizes in Genesis sixteen, it's like, you know, I, I got the son because God tells him says, oh by the way, by this time next year, Sarah's going to have a child. The promise I told you, you're going to have a son. Well, Abraham laughs and he's like, he already has a thirteen year old kid by Hagar, who he thought was going to, all the blessings were going to go through him. Mm-hmm. And remember last time we talked about the two warring brothers. So you got Ishmael, who winds up being basically the father of Islam, because, you know, when you follow his lineage, all yeah. that. And then you got Isaac, who is the father of the Jewish lineage as it went down it's through. It's amazing. It it's came amazing. from the same person. It's amazing. And, it, and he was thinking he was doing a good thing, but he wasn't. And that's what's that's what I love about the Bible because Abraham is a central figure, and he is a obviously he's the father of the faithful, and yet he was a flawed person yeah. who made a ton of mistakes. That's one of the reasons, Al, I believe the Bible is true because 
here's the father of the Arabs coming from Abraham, him trying to kind of outdo God, help him out a little bit. Right. So Abraham and Hagar, here comes Ishmael, the father of the Arabs, and then here comes Isaac, the father of the Jewish lineage, right. the seed line of Jesus. And you look at it and you say, how do you dream this stuff up? If, it, if it's all a man-made thing, how in the world could you come up with yeah, that? It's a strong evidence. But it also shows you that God uses families, which is why I told about you know the trips that we go on. Because I'm trying, my number one goal in life is to make sure I do everything in my power via God's power to get my immediate family, wife and kids yep. headed north. Yep. you know, to heaven. Yep. And so when you, when you take a trip and that's why a lot of the things we do are hard. And like when we, we went mountain climbing in Utah and it kind of breaks you down, but you got to come together as a family. Cause now my kids are getting older. They're all, you know, they've moved across the country. So we come together at least, you know, to do that. But Al, when you mentioned about how, despite the flaws, a lot of people, they read the old Testament and they're like, well, these people are terrible. You know, they, I think of David, you know, and, mm-hmm. and what he did, and oh, yeah. you see Abraham and the problem. But really, when you think about it, we're all terrible at that's some right. point. That, exactly. That's why he would eventually send Jesus, and that's why he uses us despite, you know, our flaws. It always comes back to that. And all families are different, and all roles, you know, change from time to time based on circumstance. But uh, the bottom line was God knows the heart. He know he knows if your heart is right, right. and even though we mess up and struggle, an, an infallible God working with fallible human beings. Yeah. Right, it's a story of the Bible. Well, and it is, <clears throat> and you're right, Jay. You think about it. People look at the Bible and they you, you talk about Abraham or Sarah or Moses, all these people that we're going to be talking about, and <clears throat> they almost put them in this place of it's, it's holier than than real people. Yeah. They become characters yep. of but look, the Bible. There's but no, if, there, if somebody was writing our story today, like if, if if God decided he was going to have another revelation, he's just writing about his people, we'd have the same thing. We'd have mistakes. Yeah. You talked about it with the cell phone deal. I mean, in a family struggling, trying to figure out when the evil one comes in, I mean, that, that was a godly solution. Isn't it amazing, yeah. Al, that God goes to great lengths to show us Throughout the ages, beginning way back to here, Genesis, Abraham, and all of them, <clears throat> it's amazing that he always shows their flaws. That's right. He always points out their flaws until he himself shows up right. in flesh, Jesus, and with him, there are no flaws. Right. And when he speaks, he's the one that started it way back. That's right. And he rolled all the way through history, showing the flaws of mankind but accepting the ones by faith, right. counted as righteous. It is interesting. All peoples on earth, he's talking to Abraham, <clears throat> would be blessed through you, right. all of them, That's the right. whole human race. Exactly. You just think about the weight of that on a man. So when you look at his faith, you say, I'm beginning to see why he was the one chosen. Well, and he also <clears throat> said that, that his descendants would be like you know, sand, on the seashores yep. or stars in the sky. I mean, it would be, you know, countless. Yep. And that's exactly what happened. What's interesting is the reason he's the father of the faithful is so Sarah gets pregnant. She's 90 years old. Abraham's 99. Well, by the way, when she heard what Abraham said to her, she's over in the tent laughing. She's laughing. Yeah, and he said, why are you la- God said, why are you laughing? <coughs> she said, I wasn't laughing. She lied. <laughs> That's right. Which again, she thought it was a joke. It th- shows the flow well, of you? nature. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I would have laughed. I, no I do doubt. think it's a shadow of when Jesus would come. If I looked around at Miss Kay when she's 90 <laughs> and I'm 99, I'm like, we're going to do what? <laughs> You'd be like Sai. Sai said, hey, hey, boys, that ship. Has Trust failed. me, it ain't gonna happen. I'm just seeing it 73 at 99. I'm like, whoa. So, however you look at it on the age thing, it was it, the the Bible says in Hebrews that his body was as good as dead. Yeah, at the, and hers too, which is not real good word, encouraging words when you get up to 80 or 90. Well, that's what happens. It's hey. just that ship has sailed. I mean, I mean, right. Believe me, it's real. <laughs> but I do think it was a shot. You know, everything in the Old Testament is a shadow that's of right. what Jesus would fulfill and i do think the difficulty not impossible but difficulty of having a child here which god with god all things are possible 
Well, then when he got to Jesus the, in the sea lines, L, well, it was just with a virgin. Oh, we yeah. went from uh, you being 90 and 100. Too old to cut the mustard, I'll get kids out of that. Yeah. And- <laughs> to like, well, that this is impossible, which I think is, is a trend that, you know, when it comes down to our everyday lives, no matter what the situation, oh, there's always a way out. Telling you. Well, that's exactly right. So, so he has, so they have a son. And so now he's about 13. And so Abraham's like, you know, now he's, you know, 110 years old, 113 years old. And so he's like, all right, well, we, we did it, God. We, 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 we provided the heir, you know, all those blessings are going to come through him. And then God throws him a complete, another curveball. It says, I tell you what, I want you to take your son. Now we're in Genesis 22. And it says, doesn't it say your only son? He says your son. Then he he says your only son as a reminder. You know, this is the only one. So don't think you're going to. That's the one, your seed, through whom I'm going to bless all nations. Exactly. He says, take him and you go over here on the mountain and I'll tell you where to go. Again, he's just this call and he says, I want you to sacrifice him. Now there's been I've read commentaries through the years. People try to say it was you know wasn't really going to kill him. Blah blah blah. No, it's he meant sacrifice him. Yeah, kill him on a pile of wood. And well, burn. and a lot of people get offended. People that don't believe when they right. hear their story because they're like, this is just absurd. Right? Why would you know? why would anybody? But they underestimated what faith is. Well, and they under you know he explains it in in the uh, Hall of Faith chapter. He was 11. 11, which I love. I mean, it makes the hair stand up on it's the back of my neck yeah. when I read that. Because, you know, in Hebrews 11, he says that he reasoned that God could raise him from the dead. That's right. I mean, you just think how hard it is to live in Christian life. And we, we hear see, the he's resurrection. going to bless all nations through my yeah. child. He wants me to kill him. Let's see here now. Oh, I get it. He's going to raise him right He's going to raise him from the dead. Right. Where's well, my knife? Because he's the God where all things are possible. That's well, right. I, have Even two, that. I have four sons. Y'all are two of them. I would find it very difficult to take those orders from the Almighty to say, take Al, stretch yeah. him out on a pile of wood there, Phil, get your knife and kill him. Right. I would have found that very difficult to do. As would most people, which is why – he was called in the New Testament the father of the faithful. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the ultimate. granted, he did have God talking to him, yep. which I do think affected the situation. It did. Mm-hmm. You know, if God is not whispering in your ear, but just talking in your ear, audible, it, you would say, you know what? I guess, I guess he's going to take care of this. <laughs> It'd be a little tougher to do through faith, but it would be possible, you know. Well, and remember, I think it's in Romans 4 that when Paul says, talking about him having the child to begin with at 99, which was also a faith moment. Against all hope, in hope, Abraham believed. Mm -hmm. So you think about that. That's a a huge phrase, against all hope. In other words, it was a hopeless situation, and yet he somehow managed to have hope, so much so that he raised the knife up, and he's about to kill him. When God says, whoa, 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 you know, and he sends out a, sacrifice an animal and says here's what i want you to do so the skeptic would say well why go through all this why make it so hard why because that's the way life is right you're always questioning why this is happening that's you right. can't see the direction you, you're trying to figure it out and so you have these stories that are inspired by the holy spirit and they're real not yeah. just it's not like we made up a story Th- this is what happened and all of yep. a sudden you start saying oh there's a bigger plan here. I, I, you know, here I am, this finite little being, like a speck, you know, on a planet compared to the the universe. You know, God's got this. He He's in control. I need to be seeking His will and finding how this works in my situation. But when I read stuff like this on on what somebody could deduct mm-hmm. and reason and then actually do, oh, it's incredible and it's inspiring. Because it just seems like my problems aren't that big right. compared to that. You know, I, I just did one that they'll be seeing on uh, Blaze TV, about four or five little sessions. But guys like Karl Marx, who started out as a religious guy, whatever, I don't know what group he was with, but uh, then morphed out into a, an avowed atheist. One of the questions would be, 
what would an atheist think if they're sitting here, which I doubt, but you never know, and they heard this story because Karl Marx said the religion is, is the opium of the people. It's yeah. an illusion. It's, it's, it's talking about the heart, he said, in a heartless society. Right. There's no such thing as what these people, these religious people are saying. But when you look at the reading and you look at the history and the time frame and what happened as you followed the faithful from Abraham all the way to Jesus right. till the present day, if you look at it historically accurate, archaeologically it's sound, the names, dates, places, they, they, you know, they, it's, it's, they've proven beyond a doubt all these places and all these dates are correct. Right. Well, you would think at least it would at least be worth investigating. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> In my mind. Right. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's really interesting because people people are hopeless. I mean, there's people watching us on this <clears throat> podcast, and they're in a seemingly hopeless situation. Their mindset is, I don't know how to, like Jay said, I don't know how to get past where I'm at right now. And so the reason we're talking about this, think about how cold and dead if if you just if you had no belief and no chance for anything beyond whatever your problem is, that, that's a pretty that's a pretty we get the charge place. we get yeah. the charge all the time. Well, y'all, if if we're atheists, you hate us. We're like, let me tell you about a guy, Abraham, over in the Old Testament, and yeah. and we tell him this story. You say, oh no, we don't hate you at all. We're just saying investigate this yeah See and, and that's why you tell the stories and look is it is it possible right is it possible well let's see but that's why we're practical dad because like lisa and i wrote our book uh, we've written several but we are very open about our lives and i mean we had some bad stuff in there some very hopeless situations where it was just you didn't think the marriage was going to survive all this and i was doing a i was doing a radio show one time and a guy said why why would you of course you know the show's going and people like our family and he was like why would you tell all this bad stuff about why would your you life? talk about your mistakes yeah why would you because he, he here's what he says because people love you guys i mean but yeah. they're gonna read this and it's like these guys are terrible but i i just remember that moment i, I looked at him and i said well they're saying they're sinners that's right i said <laughs> i said people are hopeless and if they read our story and think they made it they got past mm -hmm. all that then it provides a chance for somebody else to do something. So, you know, it's, it's the old power of the testimony. So that's, so all we're reading about with people like Abraham and others are the testimony of what they've done, or, you know, in their lives. Which brings me to something else I want to bring up to you guys, because Abraham is another interesting thing in the New Testament. So Paul spends Romans 4 talking about Abraham and faith and how it impacts. Because remember, you know, Paul's come along – you know, which we'll get into this later, but when the law shows up with Moses, things change, you know, for the people of God. And so then it kind of becomes this, you know, situation, law versus faith and works versus faith. And so that's going to be like the Jewish narrative. So Jesus shows up on the scene and he spends most of his time trying to get him out of this works mentality. So Paul spends a lot of time in Romans talking about the power of faith and he uses Abraham as his illustration. But then James comes along and he writes an interesting little piece about was well, not just your faith I mean it's what you do so your faith and your actions exactly working together right and his faith and he uses was, Abraham as his, his faith was based on what he did meaning right. which it seems action right, right, it, right. it seems contradictory just at right. face value right which is why I want to bring it up because yeah. in this a little more in the weeds of, of church and, and all that, but there is sometimes this thing about it's either faith only yep. or law only or works only. Yep. And so people want to just take one or the other. And it's just, I guess it's human nature, uh, you know, for people to look at it that way. But, but basically the new Testament uses Abraham as the example to say faith is what you believe, but also faith is what you do. One well, of the that, greatest that texts in the Bible is when they questioned Jesus, and he said, oh, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it, right. fulfill it, meaning I'm going to show you what perfect love right. can accomplish. Right. You will keep the entire thing. Right. Unfortunately for the human race, he was the only one 
that actually kept it. Right. And fortunately for the human race, because he kept it, our faith in him will save us. It's counted. We're counted as righteous, just exactly. like Abraham. Right. You know, it's pretty interesting over in Hebrews. I think it's Hebrews 11 mile. Uh, Abraham, with all the faith that he had, you say, well, at the time, uh, it was counted as righteous. But but check this out. Where is it? Where it says, uh, none of them received what was promised. So that's the last verse in Hebrews yeah. 11. Yeah, Only Hebrews together, 11. With yeah. us. They were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised because at the time, God had not become flesh yet, right. died on a cross, was buried and raised well, from the dead. there was no grace. Yeah. You know? So God had planned something better for us the arrival of Jesus and his death for the sins of the world, his resurrection, him keeping the law perfectly, our trust and faith in him, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. So God went way back in time when the blood of Jesus was mm-hmm. spilled, and it went back to when Abraham and Noah and all of them coming through the book of Genesis, you right. say that blood went all the way back. That's right. But that's, that's why what, he said in the next verse, I mean, chapter 12, you know, man put those chapter breaks in there. Yep. But he then said, so we're surrounded by all these witnesses, all these halls of faith, yep. and then let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Well, he's yep. the one that brought us all together, present, past. Amazing. I mean, past, present, future, all under that umbrella of grace. And what yep. I wanted to say in response to that, I think in the religious world, people – they try to look at it like a college course. You know, I'm going to go believe right, you know, dot all the I's and cross all the T's, and then I then that's it. I go out there and live however I want to. But I think in our case, Jesus brought that grace, which motivates us to have that faith and the resurrection, kind of like Abram, you know, Abraham did. Because this was almost 1900 or so, almost when this went down and the Abraham story. That was almost 2,000 years before, before Jesus Christ. showed up. Right. So when you look at the way God looks at time, you think, man. Right. But a focus on grace and the resurrection, then, I mean, when that produces that faith and that belief, well, then you can't help. It, it, it's not like, oh, I need to go. Do, I mean, if you're looking around at the ceiling and say, I need to do this, I need, missed it. You, you just can't help it. it. It's like, to me, when people see, see that that debate about faith versus deeds, it just doesn't happen that way. Like in a right. room taking a college course, I need to do these 14 things, and then I'll be, That's right. you know, so it right. just doesn't work. It's like when Jesus said, uh, you know, the kingdom is like a guy that finds a treasure, you know, in a field, and then he, go, he, he goes and sells everything he has and buys the field. Yep. I mean, it's just like a radical. Well, that's crazy. You know, you found one everything you could imagine that you have to do. Jesus said, "Let, let me make it simple for you. Do two things: love God and love your neighbor, and everything will be all right." Yeah. So Man, I think you, that's not asking too much of you, us. You focus more on the experience of it, as far as understanding. You know, getting to know this who jesus is and what he did and the whole scheme of redemption and then all of a sudden you know you you kind of start falling in love with him and you start believing and when you start focusing on that these things start happening because you can't help it i mean it's like me i've shared many times y'all know my story you know i was real shy when i was young and uh it's just at some point i get to this point where i'm like you know what i'm just not going to be shy anymore but it was all based on grace, you know, and my faith in that. I just made that decision. No, I'm just going to go out there and do this. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to do this so I'll get some points or I'll feel better. It's like, I just can't help it. you gotta, you got to hear about this. God Jesus. raised you up, Jace, and uh, all of us. And at some point, he said, now, go. And here's the well, thing. Here we it's go. A, it's but avail- we all have those We're fears. We're here. And it's <laughs> available, those fears. It's available yeah. for everybody. What, what I love about the Bible, and specifically when James was talking about Abraham, it was credited to him as righteousness, this idea that he believed, like you said, going forward. And then he says in, the, in verse 25, in the same way was not even Rahab, the prostitute, 
considered righteous because she believed. Now, this is a woman that lived 400 years after Abraham. Yeah. She was a famous person in the Bible because she was in the lineage of she Christ. She was a whore. She was a whore. And, and he, so think about this. Now, he's writing this to a primarily Jewish audience. He brings up Abraham, the father of the faithful, and Rahab in the same sentence about being righteous before God. That's the beauty of the Bible. And that's, that's what, that's, it's available for anybody. In oh, that's what's crazy. That's what I love about, you know, the church where, you know, that, hey, the guy that drove up to Arkansas and shared Jesus with you at, yep. at a bar. I mean, that's yep. a pretty radical faith. I mean, I'd have probably said, no. You had whores, <laughs> and then you had whore mongers. Yeah. You say, you and that crowd. Yeah. Well, who would have thought God let's would go have get smiled a, on me? Yeah, let's Whew. go get in a vehicle and share Jesus. But one of the things we do at our church, they've always done, nobody said this is what we do, it just happens, is when they have, I guess, what you would call the altar call or whatever, people actually share specifically, sometimes graphically, which is embarrassing sometimes, but they'll go down, they feel like it's a safe place that they can share their problems and nobody's going to throw rocks at them and nobody, you know, they're wanting to get out of this and they hear about Jesus and they come down and they're like, I had this problem. And we're, you know, we put our arms around them and we're like, and yeah, it's such we, a part of our culture. Yeah. That's the way we grew up that's at our church being that way. Recently there was a older couple and 68 years old, you're talking about getting past prime and he had an affair, just a crazy situation that he found himself in the evil one got him you know facebook you know we talked about social mm -hmm. media old girlfriend this is the guy that's spent most of his life leading other people and, and satan got him and they come forward so lisa and i go in they call us we go we have a two-hour conversation on late on a saturday night next day sunday morning they're down front with wfr and he didn't have a note or anything and so i just i told it of course afterwards he was a little shook he was like you just told it and i was like yeah, that's that's what I thought you wanted me to. He said, well, I did, but it just it sounded so shocking to yeah. hear it said out loud what he yeah. did. And I and I told him, I said, well, brother, the only way you're going to get past it is to shine the light of truth on it. Otherwise, you'll be right back in the situation again. Interesting what thing about Christianity and salvation and redemption: when you know all your sins have been forgiven, you don't mind telling anyone on the front end. That's right. All your sins. That's right. When you know they're forgiven, you don't mind discussing them. That's right. You're open. But for the unredeemed and the ones who have not put their faith in Jesus, it's like prying it out of them with a crowbar. That's right. They're yeah, know. their past sins. That's right. I know. I've read Pretty this. amazing. I, yeah. I know. I've read this before, but you know, right after John three sixteen, for God so loved the world. You know, he got down and he said that in verse nineteen, "This is the verdict: light is coming to the world, but men love darkness." instead of light because their deeds were evil yep everyone who does evil hates the light will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed it's best to give them the dirt on the front end Al. i think that's what people and even churches they want to set themselves up as perfect and we got everything figured out so i bet you were drunk back in your past yeah. i said guilty as charged i bet you were immoral guilty as charged i bet you told lies guilty as charged you say that's why yeah. I follow Jesus, man. That's right. Well, in 21, which is what I want to read, which is why we do share, because a lot of people that bothers people when they sure. come to their church, they're like, why are they sharing their innermost secrets? This is this is awkward, which it is awkward. And because we're saying, look, this is verse 21 says what it's about. But whoever lives by the truth, Jesus, comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Yep. And that's what's awesome. What you saw in Abraham was God working in his life, his power. You even saw the signs of the resurrection there and right. the and the impossible. But it's no different than what he does in every person's life that puts their faith in him. That's right. You see God's transformational process. So people say, well, "Why are you sharing that?" And you're like, "Because I'm showing you what God can do." This will work. This, no doubt about it. Yeah, it's the strongest evidence. You want to talk about evidence that there's a God? The transformation of people That's right. that is who correct. were Ephesians 2 led around by the dark powers of the world. That's what into, Karl Marx never never saw. It. Grace givers. So John, never John saw wrote it best in one verse, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, Revelation 12, 11. They overcame the evil one by the blood of the Lamb 
by the word of their testimony, transformation, and also that they did not love this life so much that they would shrink back even from death itself. That's right. And that's that boldness you're talking about. So if you live those three, trust in Christ, tell exactly what he's doing in my life, and then live it boldly that I wouldn't back away even if somebody says, I'm going to kill you, it's fine. We believe in the resurrection. You can yep, kill me. Yep. I'll be back. I mean, that's powerful. Yeah. It's according to Karl Marx, it's as powerful as the most powerful drug there that's is. Right. It's an opium, opium of the people. I'm like, you're on to something there, Carl. You <laughs> almost a, you're almost there. High, we're high. Can't get off we're of high it. on God. Can't get off of it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we've um we've exhausted our Abraham discussion, but man, that's just uh it's sort of the beginning. And so what, what the rest of the Old Testament is basically following the journey of Abraham's seed line, which is going to finally come to fruition in Christ. Yep. And so we're going to hit some of those highlights as we go through, because there's some very interesting stories, just like Abraham's, of people that were in the situation where it looks like the line ends here, hopeless, and yet God's going to do amazing things throughout this history of Israel. So we're going to talk about the law and when that comes in and what that means to us. Um, this kind of idea of law versus spirit as well uh, as we go along uh, in our study. So, man, we're, we're glad you guys are, are along the journey with us uh, as we just kind of tell it like it is. If you have a better story, this is me to our audience. If you have a better story, well, what is it? What's your story? We have ours. I'm looking at the story and I'm thinking, if this is true, there's life beyond the grave and immortality. If it's not true, we're done, Al. That's right. Our listeners, us, and everybody on planet Earth that's ever been here, we're done. I just, uh, I'd rather go with Jesus and hope. You want to sing an invitation song? If I could sing, I would, but I can't carry a tune in a bucket. <laughs> so I can't either, but he's famous for it. So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast. 